Billings, Neil Byer, host, local realtor, and founder of Aleffis Real Estate Group, back for another episode of The Billings Beat. Today we have the one and only kitchen man with us to tell us more about his unique business and the many services he offers to both restaurants and community members. Kitchen Man, aka Jeremy Evans. That's me. Do you want to do a brief introduction of Kitchen Man and what you're all about? Uh, yeah, I guess I'm the Kitchen Man, aka Jeremy Evans. Uh, I started Kitchen Man as kind of a way to help my local restaurants in Billings by uh, they were understaffed, I noticed, especially after COVID. And like during this spring, I had this idea pop into my head like, what if uh, somebody who's trained and knows how to do a lot of this stuff could just go into all these restaurants and kind of fill in that void or that gap that they have by one person missing for a week or two. And uh, yeah, so, you know, I figured I had the skills and I know a lot of people. So I'm basically just like a traveling line cook, sort of. And you also termed it as a kitchen mercenary? Uh, kitchen mercenary, a culinary hero for hire. You know, I have all sorts of little nicknames for it. But yeah, basically I just, I go where I'm needed, so. And it's evolved to become more than just restaurants, right? Yeah, it started out initially, I was gonna be your friendly neighborhood kitchen man that goes to restaurants and helps out here or there. But with, uh, you know, other things going on during the summer, like events and private parties and birthday parties and anniversaries and everything, you know, I realized uh, kitchen is in pretty much every event setting, so. I'm the kitchen so man. I'll kitchen go man anywhere. Kitchen goes where there's a kitchen. Yeah, so I've done some some private dinners for anniversaries for friends, and I've also met some new people doing it that just heard about me. Uh, I've done some big events. We just did the Blazing Grays last weekend. I helped those guys. Um, the Farmer's Market, I've helped out a little bit with the Blind Bison doing their Bloody Mary bar. They just needed little sliders for their Bloody Marys Which were and stuff. So, I love that idea. Yeah, and that's the kind of stuff I like to do. Just the fun, get out there with the community and you know, have fun. I don't really want to sit in one restaurant 80 hours a week and slave away. I'd rather kind yeah. of spread myself out and learn new things and teach things and stuff like that. So, yeah. So are you busy? I'm, yeah, I'm really busy. Good, so, good, good. Yeah, I, I have like my day job at Highlands that keeps, you know, me comfortable. And then I do kitchen man stuff when I have openings. Right now I'm working at the marble table. I just finished up about a three month stint at Walker's which I was the sous chef there before, so that was really easy just to step back in and kind of help them out through the summer while they found some new people and uh, they're comfortable where they're at now. So they said, you know, thanks for your help, take off, and that's what I do. So it's, it's been good. But and I think some of them want you to stick around for a bit. Possibly. Yeah, I think if, if they could, they would definitely keep me around permanently. That's kind of what I'm getting from some places right now is uh, how much can we pay you for you to stay here? And, you know, I got a lot of calls at the beginning, like, oh, you're a chef, you want to come run my, run my restaurant? And I'm like, that's not really what I want to do anymore. So yeah, I'm, I'm busy, I'm getting phone calls, but you know, as you know, I'm having a kid in like the next three days, hopefully. Any day now. Any day. So I'm gonna try to slow down a little bit. I'm gonna stick it with Marble for a little bit while they're, uh, they just open the other side. They're super busy, so they really need the extra hand. And then uh, on the side, I'm just gonna keep doing those private parties and events and stuff. There's a lot of cool things coming up in the fall. So yeah, I'm just gonna try to stick to the, the extra stuff. And then hopefully by January or the beginning of the year, I'll be able to you know, spread myself through a couple different restaurants. And my goal was initially just to step in for a day or two and help out. But I'm noticing more and more that it's gonna be kind of like a show up for a month or two and like feel the groove and get them comfortable and even then you know I can help them train new people that they bring on and stuff like that so it's kind of taken a shift from that idea I had at two in the morning six months ago to something a little more feasible and reliable but which is good right yeah it's good it's definitely it's like in flux all the time and I'm figuring out the way things work I have zero business experience before this but thankfully i met you and you brought me to all these like small business meetings and stuff and i've been able to talk to a lot of local people that are really smart and have kind of thrown in a pointer here and a pointer there and i've shifted what i'm doing based on all that so because initially when you first thought of this i think your idea was kind of like a chef or cook will be sick at one day or yeah. they'll need someone to fill in for 24 hours or something you know go in yeah. there and work that 
hour or 24 hours. Yeah, that maybe. was that was the plan. And but then now I was, it's become extended periods of time. Yeah, because that's just not going to work. I can't pay my bills just waiting for a call here or there once or twice a week, you know. And I don't think a lot of places just want to bring a guy in for a day or two. Mm -hmm. That just doesn't seem like it's going to work for anybody. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to focus more on finding places that really need, you know, that extra hand for a while. And then I'll stick it out until they can get comfortable and kind of like a consulting mix too. You know, I'm able to give them advice and say, hey, this is what I've seen in the past that works really well. The way you guys are doing it works, but it's just, you know, there's right. easier ways and you can save money. Right. And I know a lot of local producers of, you know, meat and produce and all sorts of stuff. So I can maybe give them a, a reference to some local stuff, which is, I think, what people are really looking for these right. days. So I think particularly now, and I think you started this business as you probably realized the perfect timing, right? I mean, restaurants are yeah. struggling to get people behind the line. Mm. So, I mean, you are a godsend, I would imagine, for a lot oh, of yes. these restaurants. I, I'm a hero. Kitchen man <laughs> yeah. saves the day, That's right? That's right. Flies in. With and... my capron on and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a capron? No, I need to get one. I need, I'll have my front apron and then I'll have one that flows at all times in the background. Yeah. So. And on that topic, you know, I think a lot of superheroes, right? Mm -hmm. Kitchen Man's a superhero. Yeah, right? yeah. I was yeah. inspired by the, the comic books and yeah. stuff. So, yeah. Um, so, Kitchen Man, Batman has his sign, right? They mm -hmm. put it up in the sky. Yeah, we'll get a, we'll get a big old whisk-shaped beacon. I was going to say, do you have anything? I mean, how do people get a hold of you? How does a restaurant get a hold of you uh, in a situation? You know, right now, I just have my Facebook page. I don't really have the marketing money. Or you don't have marketing. like a Kitchen Man phone and sits on your desk? No, <laughs> no, it's just, it's just hit me up on the internet kind of thing right now. I got business cards. I'm trying to throw stickers on stuff. I got the t-shirts. You know, I'm just trying to try to brand myself so that I can get the name out there. And that's why I like doing these events and parties and stuff. It allows me to meet new people and hand out a stack of business cards and people can call. But eventually, what do they call? what's the number? Uh, it's just my phone number. It's 406-850-5334. So it's just my personal phone number. So if you call, you get me. Uh, if I don't answer, I'm probably working in a restaurant and getting through a dinner shift. But And you'll do weddings? You'll yeah, do I'll do personal I've, chef situations. Yeah, a little You've bit of everything. Cook. Uh, uh, trainings? I've done cooking classes. Uh, we just did a, a little cooking thing at the depot a couple weeks ago. It was like a built for beef thing. So they wanted me to use some local beef to teach elementary school kids how to make something with beef. So we did a little chili cook off and that's really easy for kids to pick up and you get to use beef. So, you know, I can, I can fit in pretty much everywhere. Weddings are a little tough because I don't have a team yet or anything. So I, I have people. So I small call. weddings. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, if I have some people that are willing to help me, that's cool. But I, I don't plan on hiring anyone until... How many people does it take to man a chef? I guess it depends on how many guests you have. But Yeah. You know, like uh, me and Nick Steen at Walker's, we did a wedding a couple weeks ago. It was just a rehearsal dinner for like 60 people. Just two people. Just the two of you. Yeah, we well, I mean, he let us use walkers. We use the restaurant, and he has access to all the food and the vendors okay. and stuff. And so basically, I showed up and helped him prep okay. all the food. Cause, so it was on site at, at the restaurant? Uh, all the food making was, yeah. And then they actually were having the rehearsal dinner like three blocks away. Okay. So we just packed up the cars, took it over there. He said, good luck, come back when you're done, because he had to go run the restaurant on a Friday night. So I just hung around and made sure all the food was stocked and people were happy. And if they had any questions, you know, some people are worried about like gluten-free things and vegan things and keto things. Like there's a all thousand kinds of things, a thousand diets these days. So <laughs> yeah. So I just hung around and answered questions and stuff like that, but it was, it was pretty easy. Once the food's done, it's, it's a one man job after that. Okay. But yeah. And obviously all work is good. Yeah. Restaurants are good. Mm -hmm. These private type of gigs are good. Do you yeah. have a preference? Do you enjoy one more than the other? Um, you know, it's uh, there's different reasons I like other things. I've done some volunteer work. That's cool because I like to help the community and it gets my name out there and stuff. And then the restaurants are fun because it helps me learn new things from other chefs and also proves that, you know, I can come into a place and just fit right in and step in. And I'm a pretty fun, active guy on the line. So I do like cooking on the line. That's probably like my favorite part of restaurant work. But then the parties and events are cool because like I said, I get to meet a lot of people and I get to socialize and it's a little more laid back. They brought me a, a white claw at that wedding dinner and we're like, yeah, lay back, have fun. Have a drink. So yeah, it's, it's you know, 
each of them have their perks and none of them really have all that many downfalls. So it's, it's the right place to Kitchen be. Kitchen environments can have high pressure situation, right? Do you, oh, certainly. Yeah. Do you enjoy it's, that? The I, high I pressure think or? that's when I get like my most, you know, Jeremy kitchen man <laughs> persona. Uh, you know, I've, I've definitely had nights where, you know, I'm stressed out and I'm yelling and stuff and that's what happens and people understand in the restaurant industry, you know, everybody gets high strung and then at the end of the day, you all high five because you made it through and right. you come back the you next day. You accomplished it. You yeah. Got to the top of I've, the I've you never know, got to the point where I had to break down on my knees and walk out of a restaurant or anything. You know, it's not what you do. You yell at a server for not grabbing her food or something once in a while or you yell at a cook for cooking something wrong or forgetting something and then at the end of the day you're all buddies and you come back and do it again. It's a family. So, yeah, yeah, it is. It really is. And it's it like shows when I go to other places and you know, a lot of restaurants are really tight knit. And mm -hmm. so I feel when I come in I'm kinda like messing it up, but everyone's been really nice and so then, far. And now you have multiple families. Right. Yeah, I mean, exactly. And if yeah. I ever need anything, you know, I have a lot of people I can call or if anyone's ever looking for something specific, I can say, hey, go to this place. It's really good and stuff like that. I've seen a lot of people, you know, complaining about chain restaurants lately online. And so I've been doing my best to be like, hey, you know, there's a lot of local places out there that will give you that family environment with good food and good service and stuff. And you people. don't have to worry about, you know, an hour long wait at Applebee's or something. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm just trying to give back to the restaurants they're giving to me and then give back to the community and share everything within Billings and Montana and everything. So, yeah. It's Kitchen cool. Man. Let's go back to the name for a second because it's a brilliant name. Yeah. You know, I think from a branding perspective, I think it's... it's yeah, it works. It's, it's My cousin genius. made this logo. He just started a graphic design, so I Shout hit Shout out to your cousin. And, What's your cousin's name? Uh, his name's Nick Wall. Nick Wall. Yeah, right now I think he's working in Disneyland. So he got a cool summer job, but yeah, he designed Doing this logo for Disneyland me. Or? I think he's just working in a restaurant or something. All right. While he goes through school and stuff, but he's going on rides for free. Yeah, while probably. Closed, maybe. Yeah, yeah, enjoying it while he can. So, but you know. he did that awesome. Does he do that? Is that going to be his career? You think? Yeah, I think he went to school for graphic design, and he really wanted to do it. And me and him have always been like connected with superheroes and Star Wars and stuff like that. So he seemed like the perfect guy to reach out to for a superhero themed logo so if you need branding designs what's his name again uh, nick wall nick wall Little Little nicholas wall. wall i think nick wall is my facebook friend yeah he's my hero that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> so so i mean and and it also comes out of your passions right i mean you love yeah uh superheroes and i'm not i'm not really within this realm mm -hmm. so can you tell me more about that? I mean, where, where did your, your passion for that come from? Uh, you know, when I had the idea in mind, I was like, kitchen mercenary. Yeah, that's good. But that's a little too abrupt and <laughs> yeah, it's a, a lot of syllables. Harsh. And yeah. then I thought about it. I was like, kitchen man. Why not kitchen man? I'm like a hero for hire. It'll work. And I threw the hyphen in there because Spider-Man's got a hyphen. Ah. I also like to think that's the line, like the kitchen line <laughs> that I work on. I don't know. That's, that was an afterthought. You need to talk to, to... I'm so bad with things. What's his name again? Who? Your cousin. My cousin, Nick, yeah. yeah. You need to get him to make a little, some, some work there to make it a kitchen line. Yeah, there you go. We'll just put a little little person standing there. there. He Chef actually made me there, a, like, yeah, he made me like with, a, a comic book character guy with an apron and standing with his hands on his hips and stuff uh, too. So yeah, it was cool. I, I like that. I've never heard that. that we'll, get a, we'll get a comic book someday. Maybe I'll be in the, the Marvel Universe and... Just make a movie dreams come true That'd yeah be awesome someday or i'll just get a tv show on the food network and i can go around with guy fieri and try food and fix restaurants and have like a kitchen man mobile that you pull up in that would be sweet if yeah. you had a kitchen man mobile what would it be uh i don't i like this kia sorrento that i have so i'll just get one in red it's a nice family vehicle it is i can nice vehicle. load it full of food uh, but uh, yeah um you are local billings born and raised right you spent yep. some time outside of billings but came back yeah, as far as I've gone was Missoula. I lived there for like about a year and it just wasn't really for me. I didn't have a whole lot of friends there or family or anything. So I was just kind of going off on an adventure for a little bit. And it was cool, but you know, at the end of the day, I had to come back home where I know everybody. And yeah, so Billings is home and it probably always will be. And what do you think about the trajectory that Billings is on right now? I think it's it's booming for sure, like in a lot of areas. Like you sell houses, you know the housing market is insane. Yeah. And then, you know, restaurants, there's a lot of local restaurants that have opened up just this year 
And so I think the food culture is really shifting away from those big chain restaurants to, to being more localized and stuff. And there's also a lot more like providers of produce and meat and all sorts of stuff that is grown here in Montana. So I think it's, it's becoming more of a, a cultural thing. And, and I think, and I, I think that, that we see more like uh, big events and like, yeah, now that now different. that COVID is over and people, well, you know, COVID's almost, changing. It, yeah, it's, it's 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 always in flux, <laughs> yeah. but people are still more willing to go out and do stuff. I think, especially after last year. So there's a lot of events that are happening, and a lot of the ones that I've been to are are pretty safe about it. They're in big areas, the tables are spaced out, and stuff like that. And so that kind of adds to it as well because you're able to have these bigger sized parties with maybe less people, so it feels a little more personal and there's a lot of a local stuff happening. All the vendors are local. We're not bringing in a bunch of extra stuff we don't need. So yeah, like the farmer's market is the farmer's market's popping been off. The farmer's market's huge. And, um, yeah. The headquarters that Casey Anderson Yeah, the launched, headquarters market, that'll be a good thing. The Bloody Marys that, that uh, Blind Bison mm -hmm. and Trevin handle are phenomenal. I know that helped me wait in line for face painting, having a Bloody Mary in my Absolutely. hand. Absolutely. So, it's yeah. just genius having those big not big burgers, but they're big compared to the little glass. sliders on yeah, top of your glass. On top and yeah. just delicious. It's a snack and a drink in one. But then, like tacos and tequila, and mm -hmm. then the blaze and graves. I think mm -hmm. a lot of new events and activities are taking place uh, that I think shows the change and progress that Billings is making from yeah. a restaurant and food and event mm -hmm. uh, perspective. Yeah, I think it's it's been a good year all around. You know, another thing I've noticed is uh, what's her name, Alyssa. She's always painting the oh yeah yeah yeah, the, yeah. beautiful yeah. murals. Yeah, the, those paintings all over and downtown's been adding a lot of more like fun stuff to make it less dark and dingy and mm -hmm. more open and like family friendly. So I think all around town, people are kind of ready to go out and experience the town for what it is and not just you know hide in their houses and order from Uber Eats and right, stuff. Right, right, so right. People are over, I think, being yeah. locked inside. Yeah, and I don't for think... For better or worse, you know, hopefully it all works out for the best. Mm -hmm. and I'm optimistic, so I hope and uh, think that it will. Mm -hmm. um, anything else about Kitchman you want to add? Anything we missed? Anything you, we forgot? Anything new on the horizon? I don't know. Like I said, this kid right now is, is due any day now. So it's going to be... I'm going to be in dad mode for... For the next couple months but uh you know uh, private private dinners are really easy for me to do i charge 100 bucks plus cost of goods which i think is a, a low a ball steal. for a, a lot of people and he's town. also a lot of fun i mean he doesn't just cook magnificent food he, f magnificent food he's a he's a fun guy to hang out with and probably will make you smile and chuckle a little bit so we've definitely had a lot of fun and i can do like cooking classes style private dinners so if there's anything you know you've always been intimidated about making like bread or fish seafood is like my my real go-to but pasta i can make pretty much anything and then i can get you involved or i can just make it for you and you can sit down and enjoy your wine and whatever so you know i think that's what i'll focus on the next couple months while i'm busy at home is i can do a lot of more private things it's a lot easier for me to organize and stuff rather than weddings and big parties so what is your resume i mean you've worked at quite a few <laughs> restaurants under some uh influential chefs in billings you yeah my resume is like 12 pages long <laughs> so that's that's kind of one of the inspirations behind this idea was uh it's just hard for me to stay somewhere for a long period of time i get like antsy and i feel like there's something i could be learning elsewhere or something else i could the be grass doing grass is always greener maybe. grass is always greener and like i think that's one big inspiration was like how can i find a way to move around a lot and so you know i've worked with nick steen at walkers uh, i helped open the midway a couple months ago and i just wasn't feeling the long work weeks anymore so i started to do this uh, i worked at the petroleum club for a couple months um you know now i'm working with jason marble at the marble table and that guy's phenomenal and you know there's just so many talented chefs in town that i feel like i could learn things from maybe someday you know i'll be on that list of, of good chefs and stuff and that'd be really cool but right now it's more i'm trying to help them and i want to learn from them as well so it's actually genius from a learning perspective because mm -hmm. you're putting yourself out there and given the opportunity to help these chefs mm -hmm. at some of the most 
uh, well-known restaurants in Billings and, and learn from them and, mm-hmm. and get and gain experience from them. So it's yeah, it's, it's cool. a smart way to learn. I mean, it's a win-win, right? I mean, you're providing a service to them, but you're also able to yeah get feedback and information and influence from all of these chefs and Billings. Yeah, and that's that's the goal. My creativity is kind of you know. I have my go-to recipes, but I really want to kind of branch out a little bit. So, you know, there's lots of people in town. I work at Highlands with Troy, and he's super creative with stuff. Uh, my first chef was Shane Sishke. He's at Chow Mambo now, but I think he was like a real inspiration just because he was really fun and friendly and inviting and let everyone have a good time and stuff like that. So I've just got a list of people that have like helped me grow into who I am. And so I just want to keep pushing that to the, the next generation of people so we don't have a bunch of chefs that are all against each other trying to compete. Everyone's, you know, a community, so. Was that the case previously? Was there a lot of competition between the restaurants and the chefs and billions? And I feel has that like, changed? I feel like that's just a, a chef thing in general is it's, it's all about the egos and stuff. You know, everybody wants to be better than the next guy and stuff like that. But I think after COVID and a lot of restaurants closed this last year. And so people are a little more willing now to share ideas and maybe come together and do different events. You know, a lot of like beer pairing dinners between the breweries are going on with different restaurants. And so a lot of places are doing collaborative things. And so, yeah, that that's kind of what gave me the idea to jump in the middle of all of it and just branch out to everybody. So genius. Yeah. One last question. (laughs) Yeah. You're getting busy. Uh huh. I think you're getting a sidekick soon. Yeah, I'm gonna need some sidekicks eventually. Right. Are you looking at it already? Are there? Oh, uh, you know, like I said, I have zero business experience, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't really know how to hire people and all that jazz. And I'm not really making enough yet to to hire someone full time. But I definitely have a list of people I've worked with in the past that I can call up and say you know, hey, I need an extra hand on this. I need a sidekick for this event that I'm doing. I've already got one thing at the depot that I'm doing. So I called my buddy Colin that I worked with for a couple of years and I know I can trust him, so. So when they come along on these gigs, do they have a AKA as well or they just go by their uh, I think, you know, it depends. A lot of people in this town are very, I'm I'm really outgoing and I like (laughs) to, to brand myself on things, but a lot of chefs in town are really a little more humble than me and <laughs> we'll just say yeah, I'm, I'm this guy yeah, and yeah, I made I'm the bad. food I'm yeah Michael. yeah so a lot of people you know just are willing to help me and it's cool and I'll, I'll shout them out and they get really right. nervous and anxious I, but I just I know we talked about this before I think it was a couple of days ago like I have a vision of like I don't know spatula man or yeah well we'll get a whole a whole range of people I mean yeah. if I'm gonna have a movie I'm gonna need right I'm gonna need all these characters what so. comes first the movie or the comic book well, you got to have a comic book to make the movie off of, right? You need an adaptation. So if anybody's making comic books out there. Hit us up. Yeah, there you or go. Or hit him up. I yeah, hit me know. up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Billings. Thank you so much. Uh, Jeremy, it was a pleasure talking okay. to you again. Yeah, you as uh, well. Thank you so much. Take uh, care. Uh, yeah, I will. Um, and Billings, till next time, Billings Beat. We'll see, see ya. Neil Byer, Love is Real Estate Group. Get your man. Get your man. <laughs> Bye.